Hey guys, it's Jamie here from 3D Scan Store. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to quickly um, use our clothing scans from the scan store to clothe a character. Um, I'm going to use this guy here, um, a bit of an old sort of muscly dude, kind of a walking pose. And the clothes I'm going to use are these um, sort of baggy traveler traveler pants, um, which are here on the store. So these models come with um, a retopologized game ready mesh as well as a like a high resolution uh, Z brush model, which that's the model I'm going to be using for these. They're also um, they have multiple subdivisions, so they're quite easy to edit. Uh, but they've also got a lot of detail in the in the geometry, so you can see all the sort of weave pattern and stuff there. Um, and then for the top, I'm going to be using this kind of like um, I don't know what it is. I guess it's like a sort of t-shirty type thing, long sleeve t-shirt with a I don't know what you call this. Again, um, you know, it's got multiple sort of uh, poly groups and subdivisions. And then I'm just going to use these sort of uh, these boots here, and these all come with textures as well. So, oops. so these are 16K textures that are also come with the scans, and we've removed all any sort of branding, and we've also modified the the clothing as well, so that there's no um, copyright issues with them. So the way we're going to do this, and there are multiple ways that you can do this, is actually a way which I might do another tutorial on um, using wrap to use the, uh, one of the nodes to actually deform the clothes to match the body shape. But for this tutorial, I'm just going to use ZBrush to actually move the, the models around a bit and get them to match this body. So the first thing I'm going to do before I do anything is I'm going to put some poly groups on this guy because I want to be able to hide certain areas of him while I'm actually moving the meshes around. So I'm just going to select his arms first of all, and I'm just going to give that a poly group turn the um, wire off so I can see it a bit better. And this is just going to help um, when you're actually pushing and pulling the clothing mesh around, you can hide these arms. So I might do them for the legs as well, so we can hide individual legs. The other leg as well. Let's just make that a slightly better color. There we go, easy to see now. So, this is going to make things a lot easier just so we can hide these areas. So, if we're moving something in behind here, you know, we can get rid of this arm and see what we're doing properly. So, I'm going to start with the trousers. So, the first thing I'm going to do is drop it down to the lowest subdivision and just use these, this low subdivision to sort of push and pull around and get it roughly in the right place. And um, I'll just I'll leave the poly groups on. And I'm just going to use the move tool just to sort of match it up to his waist a bit because these clothes are obviously um, scanned on somebody with a different body shape to this guy. So I'm using quite a big brush here. I'm just sort of pulling it around a bit. Open up these a little bit just to um, get that edge right around there. So now, obviously, his legs are in a very different position to these ones. So what we want to do is sort of use the uh, masking and rotation tools and ZBrush just to match these up. So I'm just going to mask off the area that I want to bend or move. Just invert that mask. Oops the mask and I'm just going to use the rotate tool. Just put that roughly where I think the joint might be and just sort of rotate that in and again just rotate a little bit of move back. I just want to get this really roughly in the right place, not not perfect. You can see here this is still wrong. So to move that back I might just sort of roughly mask that off, invert the mask. And again, just rotate from the pivot from the knee. And these are quite long trousers, so I'll probably shorten them a little bit, but 
even though they do come down quite far. And now I'm just going to hide everything but that leg and I'm just going to use a really big brush with the move tool on and I'm just going to sort of pull that into position. Like I said, I'm not going to shorten this a little bit. Just pull it up. You know, be careful when you're doing this not to try and move this boundary polygon here because obviously it's attached to these polygons and if you move that whilst they're hidden it's going to create some artifacts. to cover his bun. There we go, that's close enough for a first pass for that leg. And now we'll just move on to the second leg. And again, we'll just do the same thing. Just a bit of masking there. Oops. Let's blur it a little bit. Invert it, and now we're just going to rotate this. Just so it's roughly in the right position. There we go. And again, just with a big move brush. Just kind of pull this. And I'll just shorten this a little bit as well. Sometimes it's handy just to have the actual wireframe on on these as well, so you can see if there's any compression of the polygons. And because this is such a low, low poly mesh, you can you can get away with smoothing that a little bit just to so uncompress those polygons. Okay, so that's roughly in the right position. So if we subdivide up now, we can look for you know little areas where it's poking through. One thing that's quite handy um, is to turn the uh, polygroups on there so you can actually see the um, intersections a bit easier. Because when it's all the same color, they can be hard to see. Just a few more tweaks on the higher res. Just a little bit there. So with areas like this, they're hard to get to because of this leg. This is why having these polygroups is useful. So now we can just hide that and see what's going on here. Um, another way, instead of using the move tools, you can actually just use the standard tool and just do a little bit of a few brush strokes just to pull that out. It's a little bit smooth there. And again, we can hide that leg. And just pull this bit out here a little bit. Okay, so he's got a bit of a, of a crotch bulge here. Let's just fix that. Just use the uh, standard brush tool. I'm just going to smooth out this weird little bit here. Actually, I'm just going to change him a little bit. Just going to reduce his manhood. Sorry, mate. Off it goes. There we go. Too manly. Right. <clears throat> Just gonna reduce that down a bit as well. Looks a bit weird now. There we go. So that's pretty much all you need to do for the trousers. Uh, 
It's just checking for intersections between the mesh and the, um, the geometry beneath, but there's a little one there. Yeah, that looks all right. So there you go, you've got the uh, trousers done. So that's a pretty quick and simple way just to add some super high resolution clothing geometry. I know you can use Marvelous Designer and things like that, but this is just a really kind of quick sort of hacky way of doing it. Um, and now we're going to put on the um, his t-shirt. So this is obviously quite different from his pose, so we're going to have to do a bit of extra work here. So let's get this down to its lowest subdivision. Load him in. And I'm going to have to maybe rotate this a little bit because it's not quite at the same angle as his body. So just rotate it so it's matching his shoulders. And just move it up a little bit as well. Just match it as closely as we can before we actually start to modify it. There we go. Right, so I'm going to try and get these arms sort of in the same position as his arms. So I'm going to hide this. And I'm just going to select the arms polygroup, invert it. And I'm just going to put transparency on so I can kind of see what I'm doing here. Oops. And then just using the rotate tool. Just a little bit of a move there just to get it. I'm just going to sharpen that mask a bit so that um, it's not moving too much of this area because at the minute it's kind of moving bits that I don't want it to move. enough and you can just go in there and just sort of move these polys just so they're a bit more in keeping with the flow yep looks all right and now we'll just do the other one same thing arm's a lot. There's a lot more deformation than this arm. So let's just actually just show this arm. I think the first thing I'm going to do is actually rotate it to the correct angle and then I'll bend it down this way. And so I don't deform this area here too much. I'm just going to subdivide it up once to level two. I'm just going to redraw that mask. we've done this we can go in and sort of move this around a bit. Okay and now I'm just going to use the um, large move brush again just to try and sort of pull this area down a bit better. I 
Oh, this I'm just messing up all my polygroups. I'll just straighten this a little bit here. There we go, it's not perfect, but you know, it's kind of close enough, so we can just sort of modify this a bit now. Right, so we've got it roughly in the right position, so what we're going to do now is try and sort of match this to his body shape. So we're just going to use the move tool quite a lot here, quite a big, big brush. Just pull everything out so it matches. It's got a much larger frame than the person that we scanned these clothes on. I'm just using the move tool here. I'm going to actually speed this bit up because this is just lots and lots of tiny incremental movements just to try and get the shape correct over the over the actual underlying body. added and um, now all we need to do is the shoes so I'm going to give him these sort of um, kind of walking boots because I think it matches the rest of the, the clothing items that we've got here so the shoes are fairly straightforward all we're going to do here is match them up to the, the scan so we'll just grab this move them up here might knock it down at subdivision well knock it right down so it's easier to work with just position it again, just roughly till we get it in the right, right position. Scale it a little bit. I think maybe that looks a bit big. So when you're sculpting somebody without shoes on or scanning somebody without shoes on, it tends to give you a much sort of wider base of the foot because all the pressure is actually on the foot. So they don't always fit into into the shoe. So what I'm going to do is just modify the, um, the actual scan a little bit. Just poke his toes in. I mean, that obviously wouldn't change that. And the arches here wouldn't change that much, but I don't care because we're not going to see them, so I'm going to hide them. I mean, you could just completely chop these feet off if you wanted. You, know, you could just get rid of them completely once you've got the shoe in place. Um, it doesn't really matter because <coughs> you don't see it. But I'm going to do it properly. And I'll just move the tongue. And again, this doesn't really matter either because the trousers are going to come over that part of the boot anyway. Cool. So there's one boot. So now we just need to duplicate this um, and mirror it, which is a bit trickier in ZBrush than it sounds. So in order to mirror it, we've got to take it up to the, and, and keep the subdivision levels. We have to take it up to the highest subdivision level, duplicate the object, delete the lowest subdivision, delete all the 
lower subdivision levels and then go to deformation and mirror and what we have to do now is reconstruct the subdivision levels and um, I'm just going to put it in place first before I do that close enough I think. So I might just move it this way a tiny bit. And then again I'm just going to modify this fit a little bit just with the move brush just to put it inside the boot. scene. So let's put some trousers on him. And now obviously these trousers are going to need a bit of a, a tweak because the, the boots are in there so we can sort of position these folds kind of. And these were scanned as if uh, somebody was wearing shoes so we scanned them with this in mind so it actually has all the folds and wrinkles and things that you would actually get if, um, if they were sitting on top of a boot or a shoe. So it's, it's not too hard there. Just and again, these were very long trousers. I mean, these, if I put them on, they sort of come down right over my feet. on the reconstruction of the subdivision, sorry. Um, so once you've mirrored the boot and you've deleted all your subdivision, deleted all your subdivisions, um, you can get them back simply by going into geometry and reconstruct subdivision here and that'll it might take a little while um, because this is uh, level 8. So you can see now we've got two subdivisions. Just reconstruct again. See, so we've got three. And reconstruct again. You would need to do this eight times on this boot because it had eight subdivision levels. And the, the lower you go, the longer it takes because it's having to do, I think it's having to do a projection every time. Yeah, it's taken longer this time, but basically that's how you get the subdivisions back. So if you want to go back down to level one, you would um, do that eight times. But yeah, basically that's it. And now on these, you've got a fully texture character. So you can turn all those textures on. Oh, I can see a little intersection there. Just fix that. Okay. 
There you go. So you've got this sort of baggy trousered wearing hard man. Section there. Couple there as well. So you turn the textures on, you can start to see where the skin's poking through. So yeah, that's just a really, really quick way of using um, ScanStar assets to produce a um, fully textured, fully clothed character in a very short amount of time. I mean, I think this in total took me about, I think this video probably filmed it in about half an hour. Um, so yeah, if you've got any questions again, just uh, feel free to email me or drop me a message on Facebook. And I hope it was useful. Thank you very much.